Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Larson Farms. Corn harvest is in full swing, and we need some service. So every 50 hours this machine has, I don't know, a dozen grease zerks that need to be greased every 50 hours. There's a ton more on here that are 400 hour grease zerks that is once a season. We don't even put nearly 400 hours on them, but every 50 hours. So every three days, four days, they got to be greased. The other thing that we do pretty much every day. With the 9870s, we actually would do it a couple times a day, is uh, we lube the unload auger chain because in corn harvest, I mean, the unload auger is on for sure one, if not two times a half a mile. And I mean, it just, it's turning a lot. And so we like to keep these lubed the best that we can for longevity of the chain's life. I think this is the second year on this chain. On the 9870s, it was smaller chain we had to replace every single year because they just got stretched out and they were definitely used up. Let's just say that. So we're actually having a lot of issues with the uh, 600 that's on the 2596. The uh, transmission calibration that I did did not help. Well, it, it did help, but it is not good enough. So we're going to try and put an accumulator on it today at some point. Don't know if that's going to fix it or not. We'll see. If worse comes to worse and we cannot make that tractor work, we're going to have to swap that one and the other 600 that's on the Salford 5200. Switch the hitches because we need a class 5 hitch. Because as much as a grain cart tractor shifts and needs the clutch, we got to have it working. But on tillage, it maybe ain't such a big deal. You get it in gear and you just go all day. We got quite the line up here this morning. Got the uh, Pro Force and the 450, the 600 number two, and the Salford 5200, 9420 on the 2000 bushel cart, and the other 600 number one on the 2596. It's gonna be a good day. We're gonna be knocking out some acres, I hope. If, if we can hold the rain away, it looks like the sun's gonna be out for a while, but they're forecasting rain this afternoon, so we'll see what happens. Are you excited for your beast? No, this thing needs a lot of work before I'm happy to be in it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really something with the grabby clutch. That is for certain. What kind of bushels per hour were you doing last night? I don't know, but 4.30 in the morning. It called you because it was empty? And I forgot to put the phone next to the bed, so... You know how great that was. Why? It kept ringing and ringing and ringing? It might have went four times. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, I'm sure mom was pleased. Yeah. Ready to roll! <laughs> Grain cart crew having a team meeting. It's uh, they've carted together before, but Brian's just got back. He's gonna be running the 9RX. He's never ran a green four track or an avalanche cart, so he's got a little learning curve. But the avalanche cart's super easy to get used to. It's just a tractor that might be a bit different. The clutch on it, we're having a lot of clutch issues. The clutch on the 9R works. It's just so hard to step in that everyone's complaining that their legs hurt after <laughs> grain carting at it because it's so hard they step on it with two feet. Uh, 
green card issues, I tell you what. Well, I was halfway down the driveway, turned around to come get my hat, looked all over in the shop and just wonder where it could be. Huh. Oh, right there where I put it when I was cleaning the windows. Just finishing up this field that I shot that video of uh, planting corn when it was 31 degree soil temps and everybody in the comment section is like, you guys are idiots, what are you doing? Um, standing good, looks good, good um, population. The dry yield on this field is 241. <laughs> Absolutely mind blowing between the uh, temp soil temps when planted, the dry summer, insane, absolutely insane. So, I'm not scared of planting when the soil temp ain't 50. Now all the guys down in Ohio and Illinois, years, I don't know that well, if we got that and they will uh, be out now planting when it's 31 degree temps. <laughs> Look who we got out today. They're, uh, they're getting my transition footage here. <laughs> you suppose I gotta put them on payroll now? So this is how you avoid the row of shame. You see guys doing that all over the internet, the row of shame. I call it the bonus row, but whatever. I, I, I disagree with how they combine it. Just leave one row and clean it up because you don't fill the combine up and then it wastes the grain. So we always, if we're off a row or something, we will split it, so we'll do seven and six, and then then your combine stays full. You can drive fast to fill the combine. That's what we end up uh, doing. And this wouldn't you know it? This is what happens when uh, people show up to start videotaping you. You end up combining a half a head for a half a mile. What's the deal here, Eric? Come on, now I got to pull my own flags slacking he's slacking actually no he's looking behind the combines to inspect that we're doing the proper thrashing and we got nothing coming out of the back of them because we found we found the limits of the 790s so the corn is really really good so about four three is about all all we can do without it getting a sieve loss or chaffer loss the rotor's doing a good job but it's hard to get that 20% corn through the sieve. Oh, look at that. We try to put them in at an angle like that so that we know they need to be moved back. Have you ever seen a guy grain carting in shorts? I'm sure some of you have. That's my first. Brian's back from the cities. He, uh, he has a window cleaning business in the cities and he comes back. Working vacation, he calls it. Comes and runs grain cart for us and we really appreciate that. He is He's a rock star at it. He's a good, good grain cart operator, but he wears tennis shoes and shorts. So Northern Chill was out here taking videos and photos for their uh, website, and they're actually putting together a video, which will be pretty cool, I think. They were over at Zach's farm and Millennial Farmer, and they came over here next, and they actually just took off. Um, I know the, the water that we drink 
a lot of people are very, very curious of it. So if you want to check it out, they're actually giving me a discount code to pass on to you guys. I will put that in the link of the description. The link in the description. There we go. Uh, fat tongue today, Chad. Anyways, so if you want to check it out, they're setting up their website for um, easier uh, purchase, shipping, stuff like that. So go check them out. Oh, I'm full again. The heck? They're having an issue with the grain cart. Oh, uh, yeah. Whatever. Got to get out and walk and stretch every once in a while. I am trekking here to see if I got any grain loss. We had a shower, rain shower come through, just a small one, just to dampen the leaves and everything. So I'm just making sure sometimes that makes uh, the corn slippery, not want to go in the sieve. Uh, I did do some adjusting on the combines, got them set a lot better, a little less wind, I actually closed the sieves, and I'm up to five miles an hour now. So. That's going a lot better, and it looks really clean behind me here. There's like nothing on the ground. I like to check in the wheel tracks. That kind of indicates if you have header loss. If it's driven into the ground, obviously it's header loss. If it's laying loose on top, then you know it came through the combine. But, looks like she's doing a fantastic job. Looks like the, the cart is back. The issue they're having is there's a grease zerk on the pivoting head of the unload auger. And if they don't pivot it to the right position when they fold, the sensor thinks that the spout is tipped backwards. So when it folds, it would hit the cart. But it's sensing a grease zerk. We took that out on the 2596 uh, last year, but it has gotten overlooked this year, I guess. Uh, Umberforth is looking into that, maybe redesigning it. I don't know, we'll see. It's a pretty minor thing though. Well, it's that time of the night where I gotta say goodbye to you guys again. That's kind of sad that the video is over. But we had a good day. We knocked out 225 acre field and then finished up on that one field with about 50 or 60 acres in it. Not too bad of a day, wet bends full. We're done at about 9.45 here. Eric just took off spreading. So another late one for him. He's He's been working really hard. He's a heck of a worker. All right guys, fueling him up. We're at the watering hole. That isn't free. We'll see you guys in the next one.